Hi everyone, my name is Simon Mishevich and I've got a very special guest with me today talking about being a landlord and it's from the National Landlords Association and there is a name change I believe so we'll talk about that shortly as well. Uh, but before we go any further, let me do the honours and ask the question. Teresa, please share your full name and uh, who you work for and what you do. Hi Simon, well thanks for inviting me on today. My name is Teresa Kaczmarek and I work for the National Residential Landlord Association. So as you rightly say, it was previously known as a Landlord Association, uh, but we at the end of March it officially merged with the Residential Landlord Association. So we kind of merged, you know, the, to the two company names together to be the NRLA. So it's, it's quite a long, uh, wieldy title. Uh, but anyway, I basically am an area representative for the organisation. I've been there for about five years now. And, right. and my role is uh, to provide support to our, our members and, well, anybody else who's a landlord um, in my area, which is quite a large area. I cover Nottinghamshire, Derbyshire, Leicestershire and Northamptonshire. Wow. So, so over the five years, I've been running, you know, very regular, consistent events. Um, and, and they're basically all about just helping landlords to keep up to date, up to speed with what's happening uh, with legislation, you know, so they can manage the business, businesses and make, you know, good decisions on moving forward. And I also invite other speakers in as well. So they'll generally be to support the business. So, for example if there's electrical safety legislation coming out, I'll, I'll get an, an electrician to come in and you know, give their point of view on the, on the, new, the new rules. And the one thing I do like about the, the NRLA sessions um, <laughs> is the fact that it is more informative rather than some of the uh, property networking events that you can go to are very inspirational. Uh, they can give you that G up to start investing in property. But I do believe that the sessions that you run are more for those who are already investing in property and need to keep up to date with the latest legislation changes and indeed it, the more practical side of things. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's, it's basically once you've got the business started, it's about, you know, the nuts and bolts of running the business. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. all that detail, you know, with the contracts and the, the legislations and all the all the items, I think there's over 150 regulations that we have to comply with. So it's just basically helping landlords to, to understand them and comply, comply with them. And the events are, they're just such lovely events because I get a whole host of people there. You know, you get investors, um, you know, who are speculating, you know, whether they should get involved in property, which I think is really good to understand something before you invest in it. And I get you know, the long term landlords there as well. Uh, and I get, I get other organisations coming in just to network. So, yeah, they're really nice events. I, I, to be fair, I've attended quite a few of them. And obviously, you've been the host as well. And I do feel that you do get a, a mixture of people that attend those events. From the obviously, we need to talk about COVID 19, coronavirus, everything that's going on there. Um, um, one of the things, and please do talk about the other benefits that the NLA could provide, especially in this area. But one of the things I saw was the rent guarantee. Now, can you talk to me about, or well, talk to the audience about, what the rent guarantee is and how that might benefit people, especially in this? issue we've got with coronavirus yeah i mean as far as the um the insurance with this covid19 uh, emerging unfortunately the insurance companies have uh, temporarily withdrawn the product so we did have um sort of rent and rent guarantee and legal protection product mm. uh, so yes as it says you know it protects your rent the, you would have to go through a process before you're accepted. So the tenants would have to be referenced and they'd have to, you know, to pass a reference in for you to have that product. So it, it may not be available to, to everybody. Mm. Uh, but yes, it's, it's a good product, but unfortunately, temporarily, it's being suspended. Uh, so they, okay. are, they are trying to work out how they're going to provide that service you know, going forward. So if you had that type of insurance before COVID-19, Will it still be 
it kind of enforced if something goes on that you could call upon that insurance or is it being withdrawn totally and fully no it's just been withdrawn for new customers okay so if you've got a policy in place then obviously you are protected within that but yes no new new customers i'm afraid okay so what is the stance then from um and now we'll get this right nrl <laughs> Um, but what is the stance from NRLA in regards, it actually flows a lot better than NLA, doesn't it, NRLA? I think you've got it now, yeah. I think I need to work on the way you're doing it. Yeah, I think NRLA, it, yes. It goes around NRLA. I remember singing and that's what they taught me in music school. <laughs> that's a sign of me, of my good audience, that you've not seen a movie before, but there you are. Um, so moving on from that, uh, it is the, obviously, coronavirus, COVID-19, there are two sides of the story. There are the, um, the tenants and you've got the landlords. Um, obviously, there are issues for tenants in terms of they may have this uh, furlough or if they're self-employed, they may lose their income stream. And for the landlord, there is an expectation that the tenant should pay their rent each month, irrespective. What's your take and what's the take from NRLA on this particular situation? Well... Our take is that we need to be not put our head in the sand and just pretend like it's not happening. I've spoken to some landlords who are just not speaking to the tenants. We're recommending that all landlords do contact the tenants to discuss, to discuss this and to basically find out what the tenant situation is. Uh, because a lot of tenants will be affected, but some, some won't be affected. Um, so it's just it's basically understanding that and making sure that you know you understand what you can offer them uh, so before you have the phone call just make sure that you understand that you know there is a possibility of uh, i know you don't like to call it a holiday but the mortgage deferment um and there's also a possibility of um you know th them deferring the rent as well uh, mm. but, these, but these i've listened to a few of your webinars now which i would say you know thank you very much for your webinars with regard to the financial aspect uh, because it just makes it so much easier to understand doesn't it when you've got a group of people sort of discussing it um so yeah it's just fully understanding that um and just being aware of that conversation because not not everybody will need the help yeah and i think the what the constant theme i present every single time is it's a two-way communication so yeah yeah it's just having that how are you conversation how are you financially and to be honest we use the nrla uh, reference check and obviously in that document there will be details of whether uh, it's just the job that they perform and uh, where they are and and you can use that check really to understand well what are they doing in their job which company they work for and are they going to be affected so it should be pretty sensible to check that document but it, I, I kind of there is a gym room that I always pull on in these times of it's easy to do but it's easy not to do yeah. and people like you say bury their heads well this is it and what you don't want to happen is that the tenant just stops paying the rent because they've heard on social media on, or somewhere that oh yes uh, tenants don't have to pay the rent for for three months whilst they're in lockdown and it's like, oh, no, that's not the case because you will always, now you'll be in rent arrears basically. And then mm. it's a case of working out a repayment plan after that. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, all the, it's just last resort really, but you need to communicate that to your tenant. And if your tenant is in difficulties, you know, a landlord understands the business, a landlord knows uh, what cash flow, you know, they need coming in and out. And if they can make some allowances, during this time because they know they can afford that then that would be the right thing to do wouldn't it to, in a you know to help people out and um, in terms of people getting to arrears let's imagine that um someone a, a tenant purposely uh doesn't pay rent they don't open up in terms of communication the landlord is potentially tearing their hair out if they've got her um because they're not getting the rental money from the NRLA perspective is there a support that if they were a member of the NRLA could they get uh, from that organization yeah I mean we have an advice line so we've got a team of people um, you know they're all they're all they're ready to help members with any question whatsoever with regard to the with their business 
So, you know, if you've got any issues, you know, I'd just pick up the phone and just chat through and get some, some legal advice. Um, essentially, you can still issue uh, Section 21 notices to your tenants. So that's still allowable. But what the government's saying, that you have to give a three month notice now as opposed to a two month notice. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the end of that three month period, are you actually going to regain possession? Because what the government is saying is that they want you to adopt the manner of a social landlord. So at the point of, um, you know, the tenant not leaving the property, you would then have to have a discussion with them as to, you know, you, you've basically got to demonstrate that you have made every effort to resolve the situation without making them move from the property. So whether that's rent arrears or any antisocial behaviour issues you might be having in. Uh, and then if, it, if you do go through accelerated possession, I don't, I'm not that confident the courts are going to be able to process those possession claims very qu quickly after this. No. And in equally, I do think that if you, even if you were able to ask a tenant to leave, um, that you would fill the property so quickly anyway, because we are in lockdown. So are you better to try and work with the tenant that is there, that's created a home in your property, wants to stay there, maybe not be able to afford it right now, but when coronavirus goes, they may be back working, getting money back into the property. Is that not better to keep the existing tenants rather than having to go through credit checks, get a new tenant, doing a move in, move out process, which is a total nightmare anyway? Well, it is, and even going through like the court process, you've got the, the court fees uh, and all this time that it's, you know, moving on, you're potentially not getting any rent. So, yeah, you are much better trying to resolve it and asking, because I know one of the, from a webinar you were holding last night, the letting agent was at saying, you know, what can you afford? You know, if it's a small amount, then we'll take it. And I think that's the right, I think that's the right thing to do. So that sets the expectation with the tenant that we, you know, it's not a rental holiday. We're just trying to work through things until, you know, we can get back on a level plane again. And I think we, we have to remember that, um, I mean, you've been a tenant. I, I've been a tenant in the past. Um, you know, we know what it's like to be having a landlord there. But I think the, the truth of it is that it is a people's business because you're providing property, but you need to engage with each other as a landlord and tenant. So we can't look at tenants because I've been one uh, and, and you know, I know how it feels when you have a landlord and that sometimes it doesn't go smoothly. Mm -hmm. But as a tenant, you have a responsibility, as I would have done, to communicate out to the landlord and vice versa. The landlord has to pay a bit more respect. Are you seeing stories in the press or in terms of anywhere else where landlords are um, acting maybe not in the, the truths of um, professionalism and courteousness with their tenants? I've not, I've not seen anything like that so far, but it's not to say that it's not there. I must admit, I'm, we, we, we're quite bombarded at the moment, aren't we, with information. And I've just sort of been focusing on webinars from people like yourself, from the NRLA and I've just been sort of focusing on information so that I know what's happening minute by minute uh, as mm. opposed to yes yeah, trolling social media I'm sure there is negative stories but there are plenty of positive stories actually coming out uh, for landlords who are offering like free accommodation to key workers you know things like that so but as we know the majority of landlords are good landlords who want to provide a good service. It's just the, it's just a small few that sort minority. of minority. Yeah. yeah. And to be fair, the minority always does upset people's perceptions of the whole. And that's unfortunate. Yeah. In terms of um, the NRLA, the benefits of, of for landlords, what are the key benefits? Why should people join the NRLA? And by the way, for anyone listening, I am a member of the NRLA. I've renewed my application for, for probably the last seven, eight years to be fair. It's a standard thing I always do. There's lots of information, but I won't uh, spoil that for Teresa. What are the key <laughs> benefits uh, for everyone listening? Uh, well, essentially you've got, as I mentioned, the advice line, which is probably the, the most populous service that we have because you can just speak to another human being, um, you know, asking for advice on any problem that you have. So whether it's health and safety or tenant issues that you know. And I use that service myself. So even though 
you know, I've worked for the organization. Sometimes you just want to speak to somebody just to be reassured that you're doing mm -hmm. the right thing. Uh, we've also got um, documents like legal documents, which I mean, I use, you know, regularly contracts, uh, the section notices. So it's just knowing that, you know, you've got reliable legal documents that you can, um, you know, use with your tenants. Um, what else? I use the tenant check. So you mentioned you use a tenant yeah. check. So I think more landlords uh, as a sort of like reviewing the business incomings, outgoings, you know, maybe they're thinking, oh, I could actually cut back and do a few things myself. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, the tenant referencing is good. Uh, NLA inventories. Uh, so we have things, you know, that basically support the landlord's business. So if you wanted a mortgage or insurance, you know, we've got all the, the suppliers there that you can tap into. And if you're a member, then you get a discount as well. Uh, we're, we're all about education. Uh, so we've got a library full of information that you can study on. And predominantly what we're doing is lobbying on behalf of, the, you know, the landlords. So, you know, landlords, yes, they want to be a member of an organisation, so it helps their business. But, you know, well, what are you actually doing on our behalf? So, yeah, we have an office in London and, sorry, yeah, were you going to ask something? No, I, I was going to say, I think the lobbying side of it is very, very important because it does give the landlord a voice out there, which when I remember when Section 24 Mortgage Interest Relief Cap came in all those years ago, uh, I remember the NLA and the RLA at the point um, were both great, incredible voices trying to get a message through. And landlords can be frustrated, so it's nice to have a point of call to go to to say, I too am frustrated, could you voice, you know, for the, for the group as a whole? And that is very, very powerful. Yeah, and with both organisations coming together, that is going to be, you know, a very important and key area for us that we actually use the the funds that we have from members to um you know pay for research because governments want the evidence so we might be saying that oh yes landlords uh, so many landlords are pulling out the market this is the uh, the detrimental effect this policy will have but if you haven't got the actual concrete evidence to back it up it really doesn't hold much weight mm. um so that is one of the key areas that we will be moving forward with no, it's good to know. That's good to know. And from your side of things, Teresa, the whole property investing in the future after COVID-19, what's your take on it? Well, it's just totally speculation, isn't it? Because it depends how long it all goes on for. And I think the longer it goes on for, um, you know, the more of an effect it could have on the, the whole landscape of the private rental sector, where you have like people, you know, moving across moving around the country uh, mm -hmm. so where there was work you know maybe there won't be work there anymore and you know there'll be other hot spots within the country that kind of thing could happen um i think those people who've invested in the holiday market another speculation here but you know international travel may be reduced as you know time goes on and more mm -hmm. people will likely be holidaying in the uk so I think, you know, that could be quite a good area, good area to be in going forward. But I think, you know, if, it, if a, a landlord is invested for the long term, then, you know, they've set up their business for a long term. And this is just sort of a, like a rocky, a rocky road, but they're in it for the long term, aren't they? Um, it's not just a... Yeah. No. If, if you've got those landlords who have maybe just inherited a property... They don't quite know what to do with it. They're not set up properly. You know, they're not consulted with yourself to make sure they, you know, they got all the tax elements set up in the most efficient way. Those are the kind of people who are going to teeter and maybe drop off out of the scene. So, I, yeah. But for what it's worth, that was my speculation. Oh no, it's valid. And to be fair, like you say, it's all speculation. Um, and I know that you're going to be joining the experts panel for May onwards, so that's been great to, uh, to have you on board for that. And what Tim was saying yesterday from the experts panel last night, uh, which again, for anyone listening in, is the first Monday of every month. So Teresa and I will be on that with a number of other expert panel members. Um, but Tim Bishop, who is a solicitor, was saying the same thing. It's purely speculation. Although we have had a recession, 
it is difficult to understand how this one in particular will affect us. So, but uh, I just want to say thank you ever so much, Teresa, for joining me today and for sharing your thoughts. Um, it is the NLA benefits. What I will do, I will put a link in the description. So everyone listening to me and Teresa right now, can have a look at the video description, pull out the URL for the NLA benefits, and please do get your membership. As just as a reminder, because it's a direct debit, so I don't even look at the price nowadays, uh, but how much is the annual membership typically, Teresa? Yes, yeah, so we've got two memberships now. We've got a membership for up to two landlords, so that's £89. But if you use um, my rep discount card, which you could probably put in the link, it's just simply one, two, three, then you get the £14 uh, removed, so it comes down to £75. Uh, and then there's a business membership that's up to five people, um, and that's 169 but then you can get the £14 uh, deducted using the discount card. Great. Perfect. Teresa, thank you ever so much. And for everyone else listening, hopefully you've enjoyed today's session on the interview. Um, but stay tuned for any other interviews that we'll be conducting. We've got a number of being lined up. And of course, I will be releasing some tax videos as well on my channel. See you again soon.